All right, we're going to be looking at an introduction to photosynthesis. And we're going to start with stuff that's kind of like at the standard level here and kind of introduce a few higher level topics. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to go into each of those steps in more detail. So you've probably learned about photosynthesis for, you know, ever since you were a kid, right? You started off plants are green, plants are green because they make their own food, they make their own food. We as animals cannot make our own food, so we have to actually eat stuff um, and then there's a general respect level for plants it seems to be I don't know relatively low I think people tend to realize that well we need plants to stay alive but we don't really understand the full significance of plants uh, to our actual lives so it's important for you to respect plants we are more fun than you think and uh, please as we're going through all of this think about this and how it all makes sense to you so let's start with a simple question uh, which type of light is least useful for photosynthesis in terrestrial plants? Least useful out of all of these is actually, you guessed it, it's green. So even though plants plants look green, that's because they look green because they're reflecting all that green light away. And you're going to learn about this more in the absorption and um, uh, action spectrums we're going to see a little bit later. But that's one thing to get clear in your mind first, is that green light is not absorbed at all. So somehow in the process of photosynthesis, green light is totally useless, and that's why it's being reflected. So as important as green looks to the plants, it's actually they're rejecting all of that light here. Okay, we need to understand where photosynthesis is actually taking place. So uh, here we have a plant and green leaves. If we go in and you look at the plant cells, plant cells are, you know, they're special, they're kind of boxy, they have this cell wall and everything like that. But the reason why they look green is because of these special organelles in here called chloroplasts, which are roughly the same size as mitochondria, uh, but the chloroplast is actually what makes it green. So why does the chloroplast look green? Well, if we go zoom into a chloroplast and take a look at a actual chloroplast here, you'll see that the chloroplast looks like uh, a little pill with little coins stacked up inside. Each one of these little coins is called a thylakoid, and we're going to start there. And inside the thylakoid is actually the pigment called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is what actually looks green because it's rejecting green light. So that means chlorophyll is going to be doing something about absorbing uh, light and it's green that it happens to be rejecting. So let's jump right into it. So one thylakoid, I'm going to use a diagram like this on the next slide we're going to see in a second. This here, this green thing in the center, this entire thing is one thylakoid that we're going to be examining. So uh, it's going to look a little complex but I'm cramming everything into one diagram so you can kind of get a big picture of what's going on here. So we are looking at one thylakoid which can be found in stacks inside these uh, chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are organelles that are found in the cytoplasm of a plant cell, and then a plant is made up of many of these plant cells, obviously. So here's the diagram. Here's that big thing that we were talking about um, earlier. So right now we're looking at a thylakoid. So this oval structure here is a thylakoid. And the wall here is called the thylakoid membrane. So can I put that here? Was that going to make sense to you? Thylakoid membrane. So when you think about photosynthesis, obviously you think about what plants need to stay alive. So the thylakoid is actually found inside the chloroplast here. So what do plants need? Let's start with the easiest thing, and everyone's going to say light energy. So there's our beautiful sun, and this is light energy that's being delivered. And the light energy is being delivered to a specific chemical, and that chemical is the thing that makes plants so important, and it is this thing called chlorophyll and chlorophyll is the green colored pigment that's bound inside the uh, bound to the thylakoid membrane it is a photosynthetic pigment and we're going to see some other pigments in later videos but this is the main photosynthetic pigment here so all right what's going to happen here what else do we need um, besides the sun and down here i'm going to scroll down a little bit we also need water right you got to water your plants so the water is going to come in and the water is going to be affected by an enzyme and we'll just call it the water splitting enzyme and we can go ahead and jump into this already because 
if water gets split, well, what do I get? I get some hydrogen and some oxygen. And I can split the hydrogen even further. Let's take the oxygen. Here's the oxygen. That's the waste product already. It comes off right there, right at the beginning, when water gets split. This process is called photolysis, by the way, when uh, water gets split. Photo using light. Lysis means split. So it kind of, you can kind of help you to remember that. And let's see, if oxygen comes off, then we have hydrogen left over. And it turns out that hydrogen actually gets split even further. Hydrogen gets split into, um, I'll just put these together for now, a proton and electron. And let's come back up here for a second. So the chlorophyll gets excited by the light energy and what actually happens is the chlorophyll has electrons in there and when the light energy hits the chlorophyll, it's going to knock, knock out a bunch of electrons, Psh, just like this, it's going to jump out and the electron is going to be transferred over here and actually as more electrons get knocked out, these electrons just get bumped down a line here, it's called something called the electron transport chain. Now look over here. Eventually, you can think if chlorophyll keeps getting all its electrons excited and jumping out, isn't, gonna, isn't it going to run out of electrons? And the answer is yes. But look, as long as we have water coming in, and when that water gets split into hydrogen and oxygen, what's going to happen is that hydrogen atom is going to be split into a proton, a positively charged proton, and electron. And where is that electron going to go? It's going to come up here to actually replace these electrons that are getting excited and bumped out of here. So far, so good. Now, What's going to happen? These protons are going to eventually build up inside here until we get a whole bunch, a high concentration of protons inside the thylakoid. All right. And then we have electrons moving over here. So these protons and these electrons are going to have some specific purpose. So let's find out about the electrons first. So the electrons are going to jump all the way down. Eventually, they're going to be accepted by, for now, just some random character named NADP. NADP and uh, it's going to actually combine together with a proton here and an electron that's coming over here. The electron jumps, it joins together over here, and together they form something called NADPH. Now, if you've studied, if you've studied uh, cellular respiration already, you might think this is familiar because in cellular respiration, there's something called NADH that is being formed so that you don't get both confused. Um, I like to think of this, throwing this extra P in there as in P is for photosynthesis. So NADPH only has a major role in photosynthesis. So this is a very special molecule and we're gonna make it look like a little battery here. So we're keeping that, let's hold on to that. So we have made, as a result of electrons moving, a cool molecule called NADPH. Now down here at the bottom, what's going to happen to all these protons that built up in here? Well, if you've also studied cellular respiration, you also th will see that this is kind of familiar because when you have a whole bunch of protons built up in one place, it's likely that they're going to move out by diffusion. And it just so happens it's going to move out of a little protein here, a little protein. And by moving out this little protein, this is actually going to help us form. This is going to give us the energy to combine ADP and P these protons moving. Think of it like a turnstile. Um, protons come out. This is actually chemi osmosis, by the way. But these protons come out, and it provides the energy necessary to help us generate ATP, which is an important molecule. So photosynthesis is also producing ATP. And I'm just going to label that right there. ATP. Now, we have two super molecules that have been made. NADPH is kind of like a battery, and ATP, and look at what they're doing. What haven't we talked about in the big picture of photosynthesis yet? We've talked about light, we've talked about water, both are needed, and oxygen comes off as a waste product. One other thing that plants really need in order to do photosynthesis is that carbon dioxide. Remember, it's the reverse of cellular respiration. So plants are taking in carbon dioxide, and it just so happens that these two things, ATP and NADPH, are going to help. And here's where carbon dioxide comes in. Carbon dioxide is actually going to get converted to our final product, which is glucose. And we call this process, this little cycle here, the Calvin cycle. Formula for glucose is C6H12O6. In order to do this cycle, to convert carbon dioxide as one carbon into a six carbon molecule, we have to combine a bunch of carbon, mo uh, carbon dioxide molecules. Uh, because we're working so hard on the carbon, we call this fixing of carbon. And glucose is an example of an organic molecule here. So ATP is providing energy for this cycle. And NADPH is providing hydrogen for this cycle, actually. Because um, you can see carbon dioxide only has carbon and oxygen. Glucose has a bunch of hydrogens in there. So a simple way to think about it is um, 
hydrogen is going to be donated by this NADPH molecule. So I'm going to call that a hydrogen donator over here. Um, and let's just highlight these processes because they're super duper important. That's basically it. Uh, we're just going to name a few things over here before you watch the subsequent videos that go into the details of all of this because it does get pretty detailed when we look at it. Uh, these are called protons, obviously, these H pluses. So this is a proton gradient, you could say. And one more way to separate things out here is everything that's happening over here is called the light dependent reaction. So the actual production of ATP and NADPH, all this stuff up here are called the light dependent reactions. And then over here, the Calvin cycle, we call the light independent reactions. And you want to avoid using the words light and dark reactions. Old textbooks used to have that, but now they're pretty specific about saying light dependent and light independent. Um, it just means this stuff can still happen in the dark, but light is not specifically required as long as we have these things here, carbon dioxide, NADPH, and ATP. So that is it. In summary, in summary, what's happening here? Uh, light energy is being used to produce those two molecules, ATP and NADPH. So I'm going to squeeze that over here. Light energy is used to produce ATP and to split water molecules to form oxygen and hydrogen. And then these products here, ATP and hydrogen derived from the photolysis of water. So photolysis splitting of water allows us this proton gradient and electrons to replace here, replace electrons from chlorophyll, and they end up moving down this way. And those two main products, NADPH and ATP, are being used to actually run the Calvin cycle. So that is it. I think we've touched upon all the main themes here and later on we're going to go into each of these things in more detail. So uh, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.